43 and 10 for Steph. He became the first player in NBA history to have at least five threes in four consecutive finals games, and he's talking to the media now. It means everything, knowing the sense of urgency we had to have tonight <clears throat> to, uh, you know, win, <clears throat> win on the road and keep some life in this, you know, try to create some momentum our way. It was a hard fought win. I think our first quarter really set the tone. You know, even though we were down one, there's night and day difference between game three and game four, how we came out defensively. And that just gives you enough life to kind of withstand some, some rough patches. And then, you know, find some runs. We get some stops, get out in transition, guys get involved. And, you know, you give yourself a chance to win it down the stretch. So proud of everybody and in terms of our physicality, our focus, <clears throat> you know, perseverance throughout the game. 2-2 two is way better than 3-1 going home. So, uh, you know, job well done tonight. Ken, drop front. Country Andrews, ESPN stuff. Clay said, there are two questions. First, Clay said that he ranks this as your number one finals performance. Do you kind of agree with that? And then two, Draymond said he could kind of tell by your demeanor the past couple of days that you were going to bring some extra fire uh, tonight. Did you feel something like that brewing over the last couple of days since the loss? Yeah, just, again, it's kind of how we wanted to start the game. We rely on Draymond bringing that energy and fire, you know, throughout the course of the season and year after year. Felt like... We just had to let everybody know that we were here tonight. And you know, whether that's their crowd, their team, our team, whoever wants to see that energy and that, that fire, <clears throat> we feed off of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, yeah, I think it helped us kind of just get settled into the game. Because obviously, our experience, you can want it so bad, you kind of get in your own way a little bit, and everybody feels a little bit of pressure. And it can go the opposite way. I wanted to try to leverage that to, you know, in a positive direction for us to start the game. Marcus. I don't, I don't rank my performances, though. Let's just win the game. Marcus, Marcus on the left. Marcus Thompson, Athletic. Steph, that was clearly a, um, a golden performance by you. I was wondering. <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering, uh, have you ever gotten into like the crowd like that early in the game? You yelled at them, and you know you, you were flexing. You, you've done that before, but like normally later. What made you do it early, and how difficult was it to sit those first couple of minutes in your golden performance? First, uh, the fourth quarter. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I want to take that as a good sign of how I feel physically, like with my foot and just the load and intensity of the game that I wanted to be out there to start the fourth. Um, just because I felt good, had a rhythm, and didn't feel tired at all. So I want to maintain that over the course of the rest of the se series. But kind of the same answer as before, just we needed something to settle into the game to start, you know, the game better and find some momentum and just change the tone of, you know, how physical they were in game three and how we needed to respond game four. It wasn't a perfect first quarter, but we gave ourselves enough life. And that fire was uh, me just trying to show that we're here tonight and we understand what the task at hand is. And thankfully, we uh, found a way to get it done. Question in the middle. Uh, Steph, uh, Coley Harvey, ESPN. Not to really belabor the fire point, but for you, is this something that coming into the game a day or two before, is that, that that's something where you want to make sure that you send that message at that point? Is it, I, I guess, are you coming up with that plan going into the game, or is it just you feel what's going on on the floor, in the crowd, and that kind of thing in the game? It's, it's both, for sure. Um, a lot, a lot of it is because of how hostile the environment was, the fans chanting, doing all their you know, shenanigans and all that. Boston knowing how big of a game it is for them. If they get the win, they take you know, control of the series. So it's all that mixed into the, and the experience, knowing how fickle momentum is 
in in the finals. Um, we've been through it all, so try to rely on past experience to understand how important that was. David on the left. <clears throat> David Aldridge, the athletic staff. I know that you guys trust Steve and that Steve trusts you guys, but was there, when you come out in a gotta have it fourth quarter and you don't see Draymond out there, was there any part of you that went, huh? Uh, what part? Of, I don't even know what part of the game. He's, uh, fourth quarter. To start the fourth quarter? Well, no, when he came oh, just out. Oh. Yeah, and then was that for <clears throat> four or five minutes there? I think it's an understanding of you know, how things can change in a series. And like you said, there is so much trust in how we do things and decisions that coach makes and what responsibility falls on us as players. Um, that, you know, Loon went in there, uh, dominated the paint, got us some big rebounds, created a presence. Draymond came back in and, you know, had some juice and some life on the defensive end. So, you know, we obviously understand it's just about winning. Um, at the end of the day, all decisions are, you know, predicated on that being the, the, the goal. Um, and I know we've all been on the side where it doesn't go your way from the top all the way to the bottom. It's not fun. It's not something you readily accept, but you understand the big picture. Um, and obviously, especially when it pays off. So it's more so the trust in Loon and what he's able to do. Uh, than any kind of like situation with Draymond. Kylan in the middle. Hey, staff. Kylan with Cron 4 News in San Francisco in the back here. Um, <clears throat> exactly how much pain were you feeling in that left foot? Were there any certain plays or movements where you noticed it? And then how were you able to play through it? You know, great rehab, medical staff hooking me up the last two days, getting me right. Uh, I think for the most part, I didn't think about it. Like, I don't know how to explain the pain it's more so just when you're out there um you don't compensate or you don't it doesn't take up too much mental space in terms of you know feeling like i can do whatever i want to out on the court so hopefully that continues with uh these next two days off and get ready for game five Last couple of questions for Steph. Anthony in the back. Yeah, Anthony Slater, The Athletic. Uh, it's felt at times in this series that, you know, you, you needed, ex you know, more help offensively. Um, what did you think of Andrew and Jordan, particularly in the fourth? It seemed like they just kind of, you know, got big buckets when you guys needed it. Clay had a big one, too. Everybody stepped up. And I think we were much more composed in the fourth quarter of trying to figure out what we, you know, what shots we were trying to create. And I think I had the one turnover um, right when I got back in. And then after that, we we just settled in and used their aggression against them, you know, finding the open man, making a simple play. And <clears throat> every guy you named stepped up. So we're going to need more of that, obviously, to get two more wins. And, you know, with JP, Wiz, Clay, all those guys are more than capable of creating, uh, you know, no matter what moment of the game it is. And thankfully they did that tonight. Final question up front. Dan Feldman, NBC Sports. You obviously always carry a major load offensively. Do you feel the need in this situation to assert yourself even more than usual? Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of constant throughout the game, just trying to put pressure on their defense and <clears throat> keep your foot on the gas pedal. Um, there are times where you feel like you have to kind of be more aggressive to score, just based on the flow of the game and how they're guarding us and where I can see some advantages. Um, but also we understand they're a great defensive team that, you know, you can't, your your normal sets or just the normal flow probably isn't going to be there for the media game just because they're you know that's what they're uh, what they're good at and and how they dominate games on that end of the floor. So those are the times where you can be a little bit more aggressive, try to um, let's say force the issue a little bit. That doesn't always mean shoot, but it means just you know attacking, being aggressive, finding lanes, doing it over and over and over again. Thanks, Steph. I like